Make sure you go to AshKicking.com for pound for pound the best home health and beauty fragrance products. All right, Dante's Boxing Nation. I'm over here with boxing trainer Derek James. What's going on, Derek? What you up to, man? Hey, man, I'm good, man. I'm just on vacation, man, down in Mexico. And, uh, that's about it. Just chilling, man. Just trying to get a little relaxation, like, a little rest, and get back with you, and then get back on it. I, I hear you, man. So I got to ask you, man, uh, one of the biggest upsets in quite some time, uh, what was your reaction to uh, Manny Pacquiao losing to Jeff Horn? I, I, mean, I think that was interesting. I think that that's like life, you know what I'm saying? That's the game, you know? I think that, I don't know what, I've never seen a fight before other than last night. I never watched him before. And I think that uh, it seems like they never watched him before. I trust me. Mean, it was like, it was even like he was ill prepared, but, I mean, that's what it is, you know what I mean? Life is like that sometimes. You go out there, you always gotta stay humble, you always gotta stay humble. And I think that maybe he lost, you know, he took it off up the price a little bit. I'm not for sure. I just speculate, you know what I mean? So, but I mean, it was, uh, it was an interesting fight. So, hey, so Derek, so um, you didn't have a problem with the decision. You hear some people, you know, some people saying it was a close fight. It could have went either way. You got a lot of people saying it was a robbery. What, what did you think? You, did you think Jeff Warren des uh, deserved the win? I, I, I thought, I mean, I thought from what I saw, it seemed like first four or five rounds, so Jeff Horn came out there basically mugged him. He was too big, he was too physical for him. He was in physicality, kind of like maneuver him a little bit, you know. And, uh, and he played out with some good shots. He played out, obviously, kind of did that, like, come on, like, come on, you know. But I think it was, it was just so wild and so awkward that Pacquiao really couldn't get into the fight until the second half of the fight. Uh -huh. So that, he lost the first five or six rounds. I mean, he couldn't really... The guy was just so physical, so big, and it kind of came out to me, it looked like he showed landing shots. Yeah. Maybe in those middle round, but I mean, it was so close, because they were both missing so much. Yeah. That it was kind of hard to judge who was landing shots, who, who wasn't landing shots. So, I mean, uh, I, I feel like Jeff Hall won the last round, so he won the first five or six in the last round. That's 10 rounds. I mean, that's, uh, that's what that's 10 rounds. Yeah. He got to say, he didn't, you know, he didn't run around in between from the 7th to the 11th. Mm. And, you know, Pacquiao, people, everybody talk about the ninth and 10th round. That's some Pacquiao had him hurt, but what about the 11th? They didn't mention that one. What about the, the ninth, the only other round before that? So I think that it was, I, I think, to me, I thought Jeff Horn, but I, it was going to be a draw. Derek, you there? All right, guys, I think we just lost Derek. We'll get him back real quick. Okay, so we got Derek back. Um, I, I lost you. Um, you was talking about, um, them, I guess, the, the 11th and the 12th rounds. Hey, I mean, I don't, I don't recall the 11th round so clearly, but I do remember the 12th round. I thought it was hard. You know, you went back to me and said the county was fired. Uh -huh. and I'm not, uh, you know, I not. So I think that at least for round well, at least the first five or six rounds, he was inside and through the carry for sure. Kind of bull him, kind of bulldog him a little bit, push him against the ropes. I think that it was late those rounds, seven, eight, nine, ten. Kind of could have won those rounds, but. It was so close, so it's such a toss up. The other guy was not a toss up because he was, he was uh, busy than Pacquiao was. He backed him up against the ropes. I think he, uh, he got a little tired, I like think, the third or fourth round, but he still kept punching. He still kept, you know, he was moving around too much or whatever. But um, it was interesting, man. I, mean, I think that, and man, it's, it's what it is, man. You get into a fight, you never know what to expect. The guy came out with a. Uh, you know, different kind of style, very awkward style. And it was hard for to him to, to let Pacquiao get into his rhythm. Yeah. Once he got a little tired in those middle rounds, Pacquiao was getting into his rhythm a little bit. But he was so wild and so awkward that 
Eu vou falar para o cara que era o dia inteiro. E se o cara que era o dia ele não viu a mão, só o cara que era o dia inteiro. Sabe, eu vou falar para o cara que era o dia inteiro. Eu vou falar para o cara que era o dia inteiro. Eu vou falar para o cara que era o dia inteiro. Eu vou falar para o cara que era o dia inteiro. É muito fácil, né? Eu vou falar para o cara que era o dia inteiro. Eu vou falar para o cara que era o dia inteiro. Eu vou falar para o cara que era o dia inteiro. Eu vou falar para o cara que era o dia inteiro. Kerana apa sebab ni? Sebab ni berbeza. Ia sebab ni nak biar fight. Sebab ni biar fight. You know, everybody else. So that's what it is, man. Hey, that's a good point you just brought up, Derek. Because um, yeah, now it seems like that belt might be more available for you guys because you know um, Bob Arum said that you know Manny Packer had no interest of fighting you know Keith Thurman or Errol Spence before. So now you guys feel that that belt might actually be available to unify, right? I mean, I, it could be, but I would, I mean, I would hope so. Like, I would hope that we could get an opportunity to fight Jeff Horn or, you know, to unify. But I think that, you know, if, if you look at it like this, to be a champion in boxing, we think you, in this day and age, in this era right like here, because these guys are obviously made the decision to fight each other. You see two fighting Sean, two fighting Danny. So now it's just us left, right? So it's obvious that these young guys today are looking forward to fighting each other. But what happens is, I don't even think Manny Pacquiao should be allowed to be a champion if he's not going to be willing to fight any other guy. Yeah. Because why do you let this, why, why should he be a champion, fight a non-descript opponent like he did this time, but he lost to him? Mm -hmm. And also, and I read something where somebody said that there was a guy, Regis Progress, and he said that he wished that he had, he was retired because when you lose to a guy like this, then it's this about time to retire. So I think that either he should be, he should be retired, or he should not be allowed to fight for a title if he's not going to fight any of these other top opposition. Mm. Floyd, Floyd is fighting before that. Floyd is fighting before he's not fighting for a title. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So she has to give him. Floyd said, I'm fighting, but he's not fighting for a title. So a percentage of the coach has not been taken out. It's the same time. He, he knows he's not fighting on the top dogs. It, it's not even a requirement to fight on these top dogs. Mm -hmm. Because why? He's not fighting for a title. So I think if you if you know how for a title, you have a title, you have to fight one of these top guys who are out there right now. And if not, I think that it's, 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 it's kind of like uh, a disrespect to everybody else. Uh, or, 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 or. Yeah, I'm saying we're holding the belt, almost holding the belt hostage, almost, right? Yeah, they, I mean, basically holding the hostage and not willing to fight all the other guys. And, you know, they were, they were, Bob Arum said the best thing was it ready for Manny Pacquiao or whatever the case may be. But I think that that's, that's, that was that. He was speaking in, in, in the opposite terms. I think Manny Pacquiao isn't ready for our respect. Mm. Not if it's on the swing, he shouldn't be 38 years old. It's either you fight other people without a title, or you fight with people, other people who have the title. You know what I'm So I think you can't have both of them. I would hope they were the fans and say, listen, he's 38 years old. Do we support him? Do we go watch him fight? Or at the same time, do we actually, um, do we fight somebody without a title and be okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and one last question about that fight, uh, Derek. Uh, Pacquiao, he hurt uh, Jeff Horn real bad in that ninth round. Why you think he couldn't finish him? I mean, you know, with you training Errol Spence, and Errol Spence already fought, you know, Chris Algieri, and we've seen the dichotomy, you know, the difference of how he finished that fight. Why do you think Pacquiao couldn't finish um, Jeff Horn in that ninth or tenth round? I think, I think he was too small in size. He was too small, man. He didn't have a good jab, so he couldn't get to the guy. He couldn't set it up. He caught him with a shot. And he was some other shot. But nothing ever set up that he could really put something really truly on it. That's why I think that the guy wouldn't let him when those shot was so awkward. The guy couldn't truly commit to anything. And that, that's the problem not having a good start. So I dare to do the jab. You can set him up and walk him into something, right? Opposed to just trying to land a shot. A shot. Mm -hmm. And you land a jab. Ideally, you land a jab, you land a right hand or anything else after that. But I think that when you don't, when, you, when he did not have a jab, 
Somebody's going to let anything out, so I think that was possibly the problem. But I mean, we, the guy was a tough guy. He's very, you know, he just elbowed, he just hit. And the referee didn't say much about that. And I mean, um, and Pacquiao never complained about it. He, just, he elbowed Pacquiao a couple of good times. Headbutt him, you know, um, and Pacquiao didn't do anything back to him. I mean, I don't know. So he didn't complain about it at all. So that was one of the, you know, so. So obviously, this wasn't a big issue, man. Oh. For me, watching, I was like, man, that guy's like dirty. Mm. It was very intentional, but hey, that's what it is, man. Yeah, that that's what it is, man. So you got two more, uh, you got two more fights um this year um that you about to get ready for, right? Well, well, I have like uh, I have like three, two more fights. You know, Harold's going to defend somebody, Jamel's going to defend somebody. And Robert Blanche gonna fight again, so I mean, uh, so maybe he'll fight twice. So I get that more from three or four fights coming up. Okay, that's what it is. Well, Derek, man, I really appreciate your time because I know you're on vacation right now. So before I let you go, is there anything else on your mind, man? Hey, man, it's just you know, listen, it's not like that was that was a lot of people with a bad decision. Say that my friend is not dead. I mean, all of us just fighting to fight each other. The same boxer again said, Why were you even watching that fight? Mm-hmm. That wasn't a top guy fighting another top guy. Every top guy fighting somebody who said he was going to walk through. So you got to ask yourself as a fan, is boxing truly dead? No, it's not. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think people should kind of stop thinking that way. Because if you're going to fight somebody, you're going to fight somebody who's 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 Oh, Aiden Ball versus Mikey Garcia. Yeah, Kind of yeah. a fight. Uh-huh. I mean, so we got fights coming up, a lot of fights coming up. I mean, so when you think about this, it's not really... So the idea of boxing and their boxing is driving. People doing well, people doing successful. And you see how, at first, everybody was complaining about Al Haney putting boxing or the people she put boxing on television. Now, I think we just watched this fight on the same network that Al Hamer was putting fights on. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think what happened is, were they mad that he did it? No, they were mad that he was smarter than them to do it before they did it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, mean, I think that people have to ask themselves, is like, he, is he something, he created a trend and you get a, you get a pay-per-view fighter and you see him fight on ESPN. A pay-per-view fighter for the last, what, Eight to ten years. Yeah, yeah. We, but he fights his last one of his last fights on ESPN. So what does that say? That's, now, Heyman was a trendsetter, not a guy that was going, that was some horrible guy that was going to just go in and this or that. He did something that everybody was like, "Damn, he can do this," and they did it. Yeah. I mean, that's phenomenal. I mean, it's phenomenal. Absolutely, the truth always comes to light eventually. You know, so that's. That's basically what we got, but uh, yeah, yeah, man. Well, all right, man. Well, once again, Derek, I thank you for your time, fam, and um, I'll catch up with you later. All right. Thank you, thank you, bro. All right, thanks, Derek. Take care, take care, man. All right, later, man.